Mark Rogers TV getting you set for the national semifinals on New Year's Day, the Rose Bowl, and of course the Sugar Bowl. We have talked a ton of Sugar Bowl, Clemson, and Alabama. Gotten you set uh, with the matchups from a number of angles. Please check out the videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. We've done the same with Oklahoma and Georgia. For the past few weeks, we've looked at the bowl teams and we've run through the history of the bowl games and the teams participating. And of course, the the more we've gotten closer to New Year's Day and some of the huge matchups and the storied programs around college football, we have looked through the illustrious history of bowl play. We've got Georgia taking on Oklahoma, of course, for a spot in the national championship game in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. Georgia comes in 12-1 and SEC champion. Oklahoma 12-1 uh, and is the Big 12 champs. Let's look at Georgia's bowl history. Okay, 30, 19, and three ties all time. That's one of the better records that you will see amongst the Blue Bloods in college football with that many bowl games played. 52 bowl games, 30 wins, 19 losses. Four and two against the current teams in the Big 12, meaning TCU was a game way back in the 40s, and Georgia won that game. TCU was not in the Big 12 at the time. There was no Big 12. And that, in fact, was Georgia's first bowl game ever. 1942, they defeated TCU 40-26. Uh, to 26. Wally Butts, the head coach for Georgia, had a nice little stay at 5-2-1. and one. Also had a win in the Rose Bowl, 9 to nothing over UCLA in 1943. And how about a win in the Oil Bowl? The Oil Bowl, there were only three played. They were won by Louisiana Lafayette. Georgia and Georgia Tech in 1944, 45, 46 in that range. Georgia's win over Tulsa, 20 to 6. Vince Dooley took over in the early 60s, and he to date is by far the most successful coach in the history of Georgia football. He went 8, 10, and 2 in postseason play. His first bowl game was the 1964 Sun Bowl, and they defeated Texas Tech 7 to nothing. Vince Dooley took Georgia to eight major bowl games. It's definitely the gold age, the gold standard for Georgia football. Listen to this run. Starting in 1976, Georgia was fifth ranked in the country. They took on Pitt. Tony Dorsett, the Heisman Trophy winner. The Panthers won the Sugar Bowl 27-3, but still the SEC champion finishing number five in the country going to the 77 Sugar Bowl. A couple years later, they, of course, won their only national championship with Herschel Walker and Buck Ballou, defeating Notre Dame 17-10 at the Sugar Bowl in 1981 to win the 80 national championship. Herschel carried it 36 times in that game for a buck 50 and two touchdowns. Buck Ballou, this, this sounds like it's from prehistoric times in terms of college football. Buck Ballou in that game completed one pass for seven yards. He threw it 12 times. That's how dominant Georgia was defensively and with Herschel Walker at running back. And this is the way the game was played in spots. Not everybody played like that back then, but that was Georgia football at the time. The very next year, in the span of four or five years, Georgia had the chance. They won one national title. They had the chance to win three. They were the number two team in the country the next year. They lost to Dan Marino and Pitt. There were a lot more than 12 passes thrown in that game on the Pitt side. Marino and Pitt defeated Georgia 24-20 in the 82 Sugar Bowl. Then the very next season, the 82 season, 83 Sugar Bowl, New Year's night, they went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Penn State. Number one team in the country was Georgia. Penn State at number two. Todd Blackledge to Greg Garrity in the fourth quarter. Big 47-yard touchdown pass. That sealed it for Penn State. In that game, Herschel carried 28 times for 103 yards, so the Penn State defense did a nice job on Herschel Walker, maybe the best back in the history of the game, and Penn State won the national championship. Georgia finished number two. They finished number three the next season after defeating Texas at the Cotton Bowl and denying the Longhorns of the national championship in that particular season because Nebraska came in at number one, Texas was two, and Texas lost to Georgia. And then later that night, of course, the famous 31-30 game in which Miami upset Nebraska to win the national championship and vault from number five way up to number one. Georgia finished at number three at 10-1-1. One, one. 
Vince Dooley's last bowl game was the 1989 Gator Bowl, and quite a game that was, 34-27 to 27 over Michigan State and Andre Risen. Then you had the Ray Goff short era. He had two bowl games. He defeated uh, Arkansas in the Independence Bowl and had a win with Garrison Hurst at running back over Ohio State. And uh, Eric Zier, the quarterback for Georgia, in that game, I believe, in the Citrus Bowl over the Buckeyes. Jim Donnan came in and had uh, not quite the success of a Vince Dooley, but he went 4-for-4 four four in postseason play, defeated Virginia twice, Wisconsin, and had a really fun, entertaining win over Drew Brees and Purdue at the 2000 Outback Bowl. Purdue went up 25 to nothing. Georgia came back and won at 28 to 25. Then Mark Richt, uh, tremendous success despite some of the criticism of not winning the big game and not getting necessarily to the big stage often enough. Mark Richt went nine and five in postseason play, two and one in the Sugar Bowl. He had a win against Florida State 26-13 after winning the uh, SEC championship game, beat the Knolls 26-13, Musa Smith with a big day, 145 yards rushing. They lost to West Virginia as a pretty substantial favorite a couple years later at the 06 Sugar Bowl. Steve Slayton went off 204 yards, Pat White at quarterback, West Virginia defeated Georgia. And then in a game that shouldn't have been played, Hawaii they were one of the group of five or whatever we called them at that point. I don't even remember. With Colt Brennan at quarterback, Hawaii was a feel-good story. They were undefeated but just couldn't hang with the dogs and got the invitation to the Sugar Bowl. And that was the 07 team when we had the LSU-Ohio State National Championship game and Georgia lost the SEC title game uh, to LSU. And uh, the consolation prize was beating up on the poor rainbows of 41 to 10. Asher Allen had two picks in that game. Matt Stafford didn't have to throw it much. 14 of 23 for a buck 75. And uh, the Mark Richt era again, nine and five. They won their last bowl game under Richt. Actually, he wasn't on the sideline for the game, but it was his last team that finished 10 and three in 2014 with a belt bowl win in that game. Kirby Smart won his only bowl game last season, 26 to 17 in the Liberty over TCU. Nick Chubb with a big day, 147 yards and a touchdown. Jacob Eason, who once was the Georgia quarterback, threw for two touchdown passes. This is the first meeting between Oklahoma and Georgia, and it's a huge one at the Rose Bowl in the national semifinal. Uh, I have not stated this in the previous videos uh, highlighting the bowl history of many of these programs, but certainly Leave your comments about what bowl games you remember, maybe which ones you attended, you remember watching as a kid, the best ones, the most excruciating losses, whatever hits home for you. Would love to hear your stories right here on Mark Rogers TV.